Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today, I will be discussing Notre Dame's 2021 offensive line group. In 2020, the offensive line was undoubtedly the top positional group for the Irish. I'm expecting four players to get drafted. Those players are Lee Meikenberg. I'd give him a first or second rounder, um, maybe third. Aaron Banks, I expect to be, him to be a day two pick, maybe an early day three pick, rounds two through four. Tommy Kramer, four-year starter. I expect him to probably end up in the fifth, sixth, or seventh round. Robert Hainsey, I expect to be a sixth or seventh rounder, maybe an undrafted free agent. Same with Kramer. So some huge, huge, huge uh, shoes to fill for this group. Now they are returning Jared Patterson, who I think would have left if he would not have had a, a major leg injury that pretty much halted his season. Um that happened during the Boston College game. He thought it was just something slight and it ended up costing him the rest of his season. So if they returned Jared Patterson, they would have loved to have him down the stretch, but he's back playing the center position. And, and the rest of the group is really, really new. Of course, you have five freshmen coming in from this past recruiting cycle. Pat Coogan, Caleb Johnson, Joe Alt, Blake Fisher, Rocco Spindler. Um, and then you have a lot of returning guys. You have a lot of rec returning guys. You have Josh Lug, who has one more year of eligibility. You have Zeke Carell, who was a freshman last year, started about two, maybe three games, um, and played really, really good. He had a really, really good year. Dylan Gibbons played a little bit. I'm not going to say he was great. He was okay. He did the job. Um, then you have a lot of unproven guys who are younger, freshman and sophomore, Andrew Christelfick. Quinn Carroll, Tosh Baker, Michael Carmody, all these guys um, are young and, and have a lot to prove. I'm a huge, huge Tosh Baker fan. Reportedly, Michael, Car Michael Carmody has been doing really, really good. Um, he didn't. I don't think he saw any time. I think Baker might have seen a few snaps in the South Florida game. I, I don't. I don't have those stats in front of me, guys. This is all just off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, there's definitely a lot up for grabs. Um, when spring ball starts, those guys will be competing every day. Over summer and early fall before the season, they'll be competing every single day. The only spot I think is locked up is maybe Jared Patterson at center and then Zeke Krill at left or right guard. I'd assume he played right guard. Um, and then Josh Slug will most likely have... I'd most likely put him at the right tackle spot. So I think you have the right part of your line near finalized, but then the left side is really open. Tosh Baker could shoot up that board and be your, and be your left tackle. Um, some people – hey, I'm going to go back for a second and say some people even think Jared Patterson could play tackle. See, Carell might play center. I'm just going to point that out there. So there is so much all over the place. Um, nobody really knows what's going to happen. Will this group be as dominant as last year? No. Not at all. Notre Dame's offensive line last year, I think, got snubbed from the Joe Moore Award for the best offensive line. Alabama won that. Um, they, of course, had two All-American guys, Alex Leatherwood and then their center, whose name is escaping me right now. Um, he suffered a, a torn ACL in their semifinal game, or in their SEC championship game against Florida, and then he came in for one snap in the college football championship game. But they basically had two perennial All-Americans. And I just think Notre Dame had a better group overall. Of course, Liam Eikenberg and Aaron Banks were All-Americans. Hainsey and Kramer were not. Hainsey and Kramer are going to be drafted. And I think we'll both make their 53-man rosters. So this group, in the end, is going to be talented. It's going to take some years. I think Patterson, Patterson can stay if he wants. We'll see if he does. I doubt he uses that extra year. He was granted from this year, not counting. But in two or three years, maybe four, this group is going to be electric, guys. Maybe even better than the group we saw last year. Um, but it's not going to be an amazing year for the offensive line. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. That worries me, especially early in the season against Florida State. Not so worried about Toledo and Purdue and those, and those teams, but Florida State on the road in Tallahassee with a new offensive line, a new quarterback, whether that be Tyler Buckner, Drew Pine, Brendan Clark, or Jack Cohen. Um, we'll, we'll just have to see. But, yeah, thank you guys for watching the video. 
Make sure you like and subscribe, do all that good stuff, and I will see you in the next one.